The Redbreast brand was owned by Gilby's of Ireland, but was bought by Irish distillers in the early 1970s. At the time, there were numerous other Bonder brands, so why buy this one? Well, it's not called the priest's tipple for nothing. In the Ireland of its day, this was the whisky of those in the know. You see, Redbreast was sold as a John Jemison pure make and has always had a special place in the hearts and in the drinks cabinets of Ireland. Redbreast is a reflection of Irish whisky as it used to be and always should be in that um, it reflects the pot still style uh, which is the tradition of Irish whisky going back over the years. So you might ask what is the involvement of the master blender in a single pot still Irish whisky if it's not blended? Well in fact there's an awful lot of blending goes into uh, a single pot still Irish whisky. And if you take Redbreast as an example, there's an age statement on the label, 12 years old. And that means that the youngest whisky in that bottle is 12 years old. Um, doesn't mean that all the whisky is 12 years old because to get the mix right and the style, all the flavor characteristics right, we will use a, a range of, of ages. The youngest being 12, but you know, it, it can be a few years older uh, in that to get the, get the whole thing together as, as I want it to be. I mean, it's often said that the distiller is the scientist and the blender is the artist. As blender, my artist palette would be the, the uh, various distillates initially, the cast types that those distillates are filled into, and also the period of time that those casks are in warehouse. Um, and only then can you even think about how you can put together different brands. Um, and Redbreast 12 year old I mean, is, is, is a very good example to take because we're looking at specific uh, spirit types, specific cast types, and a specific age of whiskey. Hold at last a red breast up to the light, and at its heart you will see a rosy glow. The whiskey is called after the Robin Redbreast. Maybe this is what inspired the name. But the red glow gives us a glimpse into this unique style of whiskey, because the whiskies in Redbreast carry the unmistakable colour and tang that comes from whiskey matured in sherry butts. And not just any sherry butts. These are the finest in the world, built and filled to order. The sherry that filled these casks was specially selected in Jerez, Spain. The casks were left there to mature, and then emptied and brought back to Ireland to be filled with pot still whiskey. The sherry butts in particular have a big impact on the flavour of red breast. It gives it the deep dried fruity notes, which is probably the, the signature of red breast. The master blender is just one of the people to leave their imprint on Redbreast. The other is the Cooper. Nothing has changed in the way sherry casks are repaired at the Middleton Distillery. It's still all done by hand and eye. And as you'd expect with a craft as old as this, the skills are still passed down from generation to generation. Every cast that you repair is different. Every, when you would take a stave out of a cask, it can be different size, different width, different height. Um, some casks are very easy to repair and some have a stubborn personality and just fight you every step of the way. I'm a fifth generation cooper. Um, having served my time to my father originally, um, which is a great thrill to having learned all my craft and skill from my father directly, um, using the tools that he used throughout his working life as his grandfather and his father had, had done. 
You can see the wear on the tools and uh, the generations they've served and still serving. The whiskey, when it goes into a cask first, is, is quite clear and um, see-through. Um, but it's dependent on the cast to give it its final taste and colour. Um, and it's that colour that the cask will really impart. Um, and after possibly two, two and a half years, it starts to change. Um, so it's that rounding off effect that you're looking for when you put your whiskey into a cask. The whiskey that goes on to become Redbreast will mature in these casks for at least 12 years and possibly longer. I, I like to think that when casks are put into a warehouse, that magic starts in a cask, in that, uh, that interaction with the air, the wood, the whiskey, um, the environment, um, can't be copied or manufactured. It has to be just left to rest. Um, and traditionally, coopers would have been in a warehouse bedding down casks for their long sleep. Taking Redbreast, for example, um, all the sherry contribution that there is. And I, I mean, I can go in, go in there and take a sip, hold it in my mouth for, for minutes, uh, and just dissect it and pick up all the little fruity notes. Um, and where, where, there, there's something that I didn't no, notice before. Where's that coming from? Is that coming from the sherry? Or is that coming from the bourbon? Where, where, where's it coming from? Is it a distillate? characteristic that I haven't picked up before. And sometimes, whenever you leave your glass of red breast sitting there for five minutes, 10 minutes, you can go back to it and say, well, something's changed there. Why is that changing? How is it changing? Is this something that I should be picking up on, you know? Um, it's, just, it's fascinating. And, I mean, I've been in the business 34 years and it still excites me, you know, things like this. Redbreast is regarded as the definitive, the closest to the traditional full-bodied whiskey. No wonder it's had a loyal core of followers for so long.